gentlemen, welcome back. This is CJ UFC Picks The Smoke Sesh. No smoke sesh today. No Gibbs today. We're early, early, early Monday morning. We were supposed to do this all yesterday, but I went to Six Flags and I told Gibbs that I couldn't make it, so that's why I'm doing it solo today. But don't worry guys, he will be back. Um, in the next few episodes, so don't worry about that. Tonight, we're breaking down UFC 301 in Brazil, Pantoja versus Ursig. And this is going to be a quick picks video, so let's go over it real quick right now. Let's get right into it. The first fight we have is Alessandro Costa versus Kevin Borges. Alexander Costa, he is 13 and 4. Kevin Borges is 9 and 2. And as you can see here, my pick is Kevin Borges, a plus 115 underdog. He is my dog of the card for this card for UFC 301. By the time fight night comes around, he might be even a favorite over Alexander Costa. We'll see. This is a big step up in competition for Kevin Borges. As he's number 80 in the world for the flyweights. And Costa's number 30. So that's a big step up. Um, Alexander Costa has more experience. Probably fought the tougher competition. And he's at his hometown. So he's got all the advantages. But I think Kevin Borges has more of a dog in him. And I like his fighting style. And he's got finishing ability as well. The next fight, guys. Scheduled in the men's. Lightweight division, we got Ismael Bonfim versus Vince Pichel. Ismael Bonfim, 19 and 4, minus 450 favorite. Vince Pichel, he is 14 and 3, plus 350 underdog. Vince Pichel, he's 41, almost 42 years old, guys. Ismael Bonfim, 28 years old, still in his prime, still young, still learning. He's going to win this fight, in my opinion. I think he's going to stop. Vince Pichel, either by submission or by knockout. I mean, Vince Pichel does have that grit in him. He does have a chin on him, but he's getting older. He's getting slower, and I don't think he's going to win this fight. Next fight, guys, we got Diane Barbosa versus Ernesta Caricati. Diane Barbosa, 6'2", 31 years old. Coming in at minus 220 favorite, Ernesta Caracati. He is, she is 5-0. Plus 180 underdog. Diane Barbosa is minus 220 favorite. I believe Ernesta Caracati is making her UFC debut. So not a lot of tape on her out there. And Diane Barbosa, I think she's going to win this fight. They're both on a three-fight winning streak. And they're both pretty young. Um, Diane Barbosa, 31 years old. Ernesta is 25 years old. So, this is going to be an interesting fight. I did. I think Ernesto Caracati is going to win by decision. No bets on this fight. I'm not betting the money line. I'm not betting any props. I'm just going to enjoy it as a fan. Next fight, guys, this is going to be a scrap right here. This is going to be a, a certified banger scheduled in the men's welterweight division. We got Mauricio Ruffy versus Jamie Malarkey. Mauricio Ruffy, 9-1. I believe he's making his UFC debut against Jamie Malarkey, 17-7, plus 140 underdog. We have Mauricio Ruffy, minus 165 favorite. Um, this is going to be a scrap. I don't think this fight is going to distance, folks. I think Ruffy's going to win. Jamie Malarkey is a wishy-washy fighter. He only has won the last three out of his five fights. While Mauricio Ruffy has won the last four out of his five fights. Making his UFC debut is a little worrisome because he's not proven yet. But for what I'm seeing on tape, he's pretty damn good. And I think he can stop Jay Malarkey in this fight. 
Next fight, guys, scheduled in the men's lightweight division. We have Joaquim Silva versus Jakar Close. Joaquim Silva, 13 and 4, plus 160 underdog. Jakar Close, 14 and 2, minus 190 favorite. And both of these guys have been in the UFC for quite some time now. Both are around the same age. Um, Joaquim Silva, plus 160 underdog. I think that's, that number is justifiable because he's not a finisher. He's not dangerous. Even though he did win his last fight. But Jakar closes on a three-fight winning streak. The guy is a finisher. The guy is someone... That can do some damage in this division. I don't think he'll be a champion anytime soon. Or a title contender anytime soon. But I do think he can win this fight. And I think he can finish Joaquin Silva. Probably by submission. Next fight guys. is going to be another certified banger. Scheduled in the men's featherweight division. We have Gene Silva. Minus 140 favorite. 12 and 2. William Gomes, 13 and 2, plus 115 underdog. And this fight is going to be very interesting, very good fight right here, folks. Gene Silva, definitely a finisher, has the hometown advantage, and he's the more dangerous fighter, in my opinion. William Gomes, 13 and 2, a person foot win streak just like Gene Silva, plus 115 underdog. So I don't blame anyone for taking the underdog in this fight. I just don't think he's going to win this fight. I think Silva is just better everywhere the fight goes. On the ground, on the feet, just anywhere the fight goes. Willem Gomes, though, he is technical, he is gritty, and he is tough. So maybe he won't get finished, but I do think he does get finished in this fight. Because Gene Silva is a finisher, and he will win this fight. And I probably will place a bet on him, to be honest. So Gene Silva is the pick. Next fight, guys. This fight definitely is not going a distance. Because these both of these guys are finishers. And both of these guys, I like them both. Elvis Brenner, 16-3. Plus 210 underdog. McTibic Earl by 12-1. Minus 260 favorite. This fight is not going a distance. Both of these guys are finishers. Both of these guys are scrappy. And both of these guys got the dog in them. Especially Elvis Brenner. I was going back and forth on this fight to be honest. And I think the line is a little too wide. But I still think Mektabik Orobai finishes this fight and wins this fight. He looked very, very good and very impressive. In his UFC debut in his last fight. But Elvis Brenner, I believe he's come as... Came in as an underdog in each and every single one of his UFC fights. And he's won each and every single one of them. He does train with Charles Oliveira. So that's good for him. He's tra he's training with some champions in there. Some former champions. Elvis Brenner, man. I'm scared to bet this fight, to be honest. I'm very scared to bet this fight. Like I said, I think the f line is a little too wide. I might just bet the under 2.5 rounds. I think someone's going to get finished. But I'm going with Mektabik Oral by. I think he's got more of a finishing ability in this fight. Might be wrong here. Who knows? We'll see. It's going to be a good fight. Don't miss it, folks. Next fight, guys. Scheduled in the women's strawweight division. We got Carolina Kowakiewicz versus Yasmin Lucindo. Carolina Kowalkiewicz, 16 and 7, plus 275 underdog, four fight winning streak. Yasmin Lucindo, she is 15 and 5, minus 350 favorite. I think this line is a little too wide as well because Carolina Kowalkiewicz is getting better and better every single time she steps in the octagon, even though she's only she's 38, almost 39 years old. Pretty old to be fighting in the women's strawweight division. She's 16 and 7, but on a four fight winning streak. Yasmin Lucindo, 22 years old, still very young, two fight winning streak, fighting in Brazil. That's me, that might be the reason she's a favorite. Plus, to me, she's better on the ground with better submissions. 
probably better striking and cardio as well. Carolina KOK were still four fight winning streak. She's as gritty as they come in the women's strawweight division. This is a huge step up in competition for Yuzumi Lucindo. I am still picking her to win by decision, but I'm not 100% confident in this fight. I'm not betting this fight at all. Might just stay away completely and enjoy it as a fan. But my pick is Yasmin Lucindo. I like her upside better, and I think... I don't know, man. I think I might be wrong. Who knows? That line is too wide in my opinion, though. We'll see what happens. Next fight, guys. Scheduled in the men's featherweight division, we have... Joe Anderson Brito versus Jack Shore. Joe Anderson Brito, 16-3, minus 165 favorite. Jack Shore, 17-1. And, and he's a plus 140 underdog. Both of these guys are very good on the ground. Both of these guys are scrappy. In this fight, probably not going to distance because Joe Anderson Brito is a finisher. He's got submissions. He's got knockout power. And he's got a pretty good ground game as well. Jack Shore, a pretty good ground game himself. Good good offensive and defensive wrestling. And he's got pretty good striking. He's only got one loss on his record. And I do remember that loss. He lost to Ricky Simone. Because I had Ricky Simone as my dog of the card for that fight. I remember that. And Jordan Brito, he was also a former dog of the card for this, um, for me. And I think he's going to win this fight as a favorite. I think he's got more finishing ability. He's more dangerous anywhere the fight goes. And I just like his fighting style better. Plus, he's in Brazil, man. He's in his home turf. And I don't think he's going to allow a loss on his home turf. So, give me Joe Anderson Brito. Minus 165 favorite. That's a good line to bet on. Might even parlay him with someone. We'll see how that goes. Brito's the official pick. Main card, guys. Main card. This first fight on the main card scheduled in the men's middleweight division. We got Paul Craig versus Kyle Boralho. Paul Craig, 17-7. and seven. He's a plus 340 underdog. Kyle Boralho, 15-1. and one, Minus 450 favorite. And I think that line is a little bit too wide. I think this line should be closer because Paul Craig ain't nobody to sleep on. He's got knockout power, and he's really good on the ground. He's got a pretty good jiu-jitsu. But Kyle Barajo coming from the fighting nerds, he's got pretty good jiu-jitsu himself. He's got sneaky KO power, and he's got cardio for days. And I think that's what's going to win him this fight. I think his cardio and his pace is what's going to win him this fight. He's going to win this fight by submission or decision. Paul Craig losing the last three out of his five fights. Not a good look in my opinion. And I don't think he's going to win this fight. Another Brazilian coming in here. And probably going to dominate Paul Craig. Like I said, submission is the play in my opinion. And I might bet it. Might bet Kyle Barajo and Jorena Sombrito as a parlay. There you go, folks. Next fight, guys, scheduled in the men's middleweight division. And this fight is probably not going the distance. We have Michelle Pajeda versus Ihor Patoria. Michelle Pajeda, 30 and 11, 30 years old. A lot of people don't believe that. He's a minus 420 favorite. Ihor Pateria, 21 and 5, losing the last three out of his five fights. A plus 320 underdog. And both of these guys go at it. Both of these guys have finishing ability. But I think this is a huge step up for Ihor right here. Michelle Pajeda coming off a really nice knockout victory in his last fight. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen in this fight. He's gonna either going to knock Ihor out or tap him out. Submit him or knock him out. He's in his hometown of Brazil. He's on a really nice fighting winning streak. And I think he's going to be a top contender soon, guys. Michelle Pajeda is a top contender, in my opinion. This is just a setup fight for him, in my opinion. I think his winning streak is going to continue. And he's probably going to be my lock of the card. I don't care if he's a minus 420 favorite. 
He's a parlay, parlay piece for sure. Next fight, guys. Scheduled in the men's light heavyweight division. Here's another fight that might not go the distance. There's a lot of fights on here that are, are probably not going the distance. We have Anthony Smith versus, versus Vitor Pertino. Undefeated at 11 and 0. Minus 485 favorite. Anthony Smith plus 360 underdog. Losing the last three of his five fights. Coming off a very bad knockout loss. And I think he's going to get knocked out again against Vitor Pertino. I know that Anthony Smith, he's a former title contender. He's a big dude. Tough as nails. But his chin is no bueno anymore. And we know that Vitor Petrino has got knockout power. He's got wrestling under his belt. But Anthony Smith definitely has fought the tougher competition. Definitely has more experience. And this might be a back and forth fight. And this fight might... I don't know, man. Anthony Smith might actually win this fight. I might switch my pick. Petrino is the pick for now. And I think he's going to get it done by knockout. He's a young and up-and-coming prospect. He's only 26, almost 27 years old compared to Anthony Smith, almost 36 years old. He's got a lot of wear and tear. He's been in a lot of wars, and he's got 19 losses on his record. And I can't bet or pick on someone who's got 19 losses on his record. And I think if he loses this fight, guys, he might have to hang him up, to be honest. We'll see what happens. But B2 Petrino... Is the pick, and I think he's going to get it done by knockout. Next fight, guys, is the co-main event of the evening. Scheduled to be in the men's bantamweight division. We have the returning Jose Aldo versus Jonathan Martinez. Jonathan Martinez, my, minus 135 favorite. Jose Aldo, plus 110 underdog. Jonathan Martinez. 19-4, and four, running a nice winning streak right now. He's got really nice leg kicks, decent wrestling, good cardio, and pretty good striking too. Jose Aldo, he's a really good kick artist himself. He's got not sneaky KO power, but he hasn't fought in almost two years. Coming out of retirement, right? Or he's just coming back, and I don't like that. That's a red flag if he needs to come back, excuse me. 37, almost 38 years old. He's getting slower. His chin is a little bit dusty. And Jonathan Martinez is a young, hungry fighter that wants to make a point. That wants to make a statement. And I think he's going to make a statement in this fight. Jonathan Martinez, one of the most nastiest kicks in the UFC Jose Aldo also has nasty kicks. So this might be a kicking battle. But I'm going with the younger, fresher, hungrier fighter, Jonathan Martinez, to win this fight. And minus 135 is a good line. Might grab that if I were you. Main event time, ladies and gentlemen. Main event for UFC 301. And this is scheduled to be for the UFC Fight Week Championship of the World. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, like the video, share the video, and comment on the video. Make sure to subscribe to CJ UFC Picks. Once again, my co-host, Gibbs, not here right now because this is a last-minute episode. I went to Six Flags, and I'm doing it by myself today. Alexander Pantoja, man, 27 and 5, minus 250 favorite. He's the current and reigning champion, defending champion. Going against Steve Ursik. I love both of these guys. Both of these guys got knockout power. They got the dog in them. They can both fight and be gritty. And I don't think this fight is going the distance, folks. Both of these guys are on an oppressive winning streak. But I'm going with Alexander the Cannibal Pantoja. The dude is one of the best junkyard dogs the UFC has to offer. He just keeps coming at you. He's got a chin for days. He's got cardio for days. Even though sometimes he looks tired in the fight. 
but he keeps coming at you. He does not quit and he will fight for your money. Steve Ursig, this is a huge, huge step up in competition for him. This is his first title fight in his career. His first main event in the UFC. Alexander Pantoja, he's, he's already been in five round fights before. He's already been in championship fights before. So this is nothing new to him. Pantoja is going to win this fight, guys. I might make him my lock of the card. Seriously, because Pantoja is a beast, man. He's going to continue his winning streak, and he's going to be, and still, UFC flyweight champion of the world. Steve Versick, I think it's too early for him. I think he'll be a champion someday, but not at UFC 301. I just don't see it happening. So that was the breakdown. That was the fights, guys, for UFC 300. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you subscribe. We will be back with our regular show this Sunday with Gibbs. We will be back to do the smoke sesh. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you subscribe. Hope you like the video and comment on the video. We will see you all next week. Have a great day, folks, and take care.